Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit more advanced into the time and offset on palettes and how to use your keyboard to actually achieve some of the cool things. So about two years ago, James has done a tutorial explaining to you how to apply times and offsets on palettes and it's a nice tutorial, just watch it. And today I'm going to talk to you about same things but with a bit more advanced stuff that can help you in the programming your show files. And in his tutorial, he was also referring to use the manual. And it's a really good advice because I've learned something new just before I start, uh, before I decided to make you this tutorial. And uh, yeah, just you, you can always open the, the, the manual and type time offset, etc. And it's going to show you the some of the cool stuff. Um, and without further ado, I will show you how to, uh, I will show you what I prepared for you today. So, uh, some of you may ask where, where I'm, how did I get this extra wide um, uh, scroll bars? They are basically here if you press setup, windows, scroll bars, double, double click here and you're going to see wide scroll bars. Um, okay, so just a quick recap on uh, what James was showing you. So from that point, then we will take over. I will take over. So James has shown you that if you have your fixture switched on, if you would like to apply a palette with uh, with some offset, you could easily type, let's say, five seconds. Then you press star. Then you press a palette, and it applies within five seconds, which is perfect. So then you can do. Let's record that cue. And you could also do something something to that if you want to do fixtures to be actually loaded to center in. You could press, uh, for example, six star plus yellow, and you're gonna see fixtures are going uh, be centered in. So uh, this is all nice, and of course you can record it as another cue, but. The, the point of today's tutorial was not to repeat the same things, but to actually show you how you can work past that point. So you have created, let's say, we have created uh, a queue here. You can see it's all loading, it's all working fine, all nice. But you get to the point where you made this with a five seconds fading from left to right and then you uh, then you realize that you actually would like to make it as eight seconds uh, overlap from left to right but then what what a lot of people would do is they would actually recreate the same things type in the same values and 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 do uh, the, the same procedure again and again that's obviously wasting their time and uh, the manual actually explains how to work around those things but I will actually show you how to do it yourself so first of all what what people's first reaction is going to be they double click on the queue they look at the delay and fade time and they can see that the numbers here have got uh, uh, a symbol here which is looks like a um, more than and in, or it's like a through sign. So basically it says that this queue has got a complex time applied onto either all or some of its attributes. And that means that you shouldn't really touch anything here because the first reaction people do is they come here and they start typing the values. And that obviously will upset the everything you program. So this as this is a complex time you don't you don't change anything here because if you start messing around with this this time applies to all fadeable attributes rather than to specific uh, attribute that you apply the complex timing on so again do not change anything here because that will mess up what you program so instead you should better go to the view queue and now, if you open the view times, you will be able to see that the magic queue has actually applied the complex timing on the color attribute with a bit uh, of fading and delay time. I know some of you may come from a different platform where the users usually type in like a values through something through, etc. So instead, instead the magic queue actually calculates everything for you. So, so right now I have five seconds fading and this is all the, the system has calculated for us. So instead of 
actually calculating and doing the the uh, like calculation in your head with how many delays, how many uh, f f seconds of fade, you could actually select the fade column for the color and type in what you need. Let's say seven seconds and then star. So you can see it here, I'm typing and you press enter. As soon as you did it, it applies across all the applicable attributes. And now let's try it. You can see now it's taking the system seven seconds to actually load in your palette rather than five. So you can apply, you can, uh, before you apply the timing, I would always advise you to release it. So that means the timing you actually applying and, uh, you may change actually your decision. So I would say apply time when the queue is released. And let's say if I want to actually change the whole, um, uh, the, the whole fading into the center rather than uh, from left to right. I can actually type here, let's say six star plus and press enter. And now I can run it. And you can see it's loading into the center. So again, you don't need to recreate it again by selecting a group, applying the palette with a different time. You can actually do all the selections in this column. So again, hope that was useful for you. And you can go from here or in the next part of this, this, uh, this tutorial, I will actually show you how to do a little bit more advanced stuff with the delaying and then also how to use your keyboard to actually input fade and delay times.